Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the Jaguar I-Pace EV400. This is the HSE, the top trim, and this is an all-wheel drive. But straight away, we're not going to be opening the trunk. I'm going to be rolling up the windows by pressing this button, and there you see the windows actually roll up. So yeah, this function is there in a lot of cars. It's there in the Polo, but it's not there in the Tiger. So the made in India VW Skoda cars are not having it. Anyways, the key is having a lot of chrome on it but there are four buttons this is to unlock the car this is to lock the car this is to open the trunk and this is to open the boot so we're going to open the trunk here i keep a button press and there the trunk of the car opens anyways you can see there is 27 liters of storage right there with the chargers placed okay these are ac chargers for the wall mount as well as home charging and uh, this is nicely lined as well that's also a good thing this is actually for the washer fluid and the wind number is below this plastic which I don't understand at all because the VIN number is also... Okay, let me push this back into place. Put it from the side facer. Yeah, there it is in place. Because the VIN number is also placed here. So I don't know why they are having VIN numbers in multiple places. One hidden one as well for reasons best known to Jaguar. Anyways, hydraulic struts. Let's push this down. Now the thing is that you have to push it from both the sides like this. Then only it shuts. Yeah, now it's shut. All right. Now, the interesting bit about this car is it is a Jaguar, obviously, but it is very different in terms of design language. First and foremost, you obviously get the typical sort of a Jaguar grille with the Jaguar logo, but there is a gap here. So this grille is actually curved so that air can flow from here and it comes out from there. Yeah, it comes out from there. You can see. All right. And then it flows through the windscreen, through the curved roof of the car, through that spoiler and exits for aerodynamics. That's the reason. <laughs> The air which is coming from here pushes the water out from there. There is no rear wiper or washer on this car, including the fact that the way the rear has been done is so different now. Jaguar says that you don't need a rear washer wiper. Well, I kind of disagree because looking at the condition of the rear windscreen, I do need a rear wiper and washer as well. At least in India, you definitely need it. Now, because of all these aerodynamic bits, the coefficient of drag is just 0.29, which is absolutely fantastic. The car is actually raised right now on its air suspension, which by the way is optional and this car has a lot of optional kit, which can increase the price of the car dramatically. So it has been raised by up to 56 mm. There are two steps of raising the ride height. One is the access height, normal height, and of course, this is the off-road height. So the ground clearance right now happens to be a massive 230 mm. And I'll show you how it's done. It's very easy. Just press the button. At the front, design looks really very nice. It's got active vanes which actually open so that air can flow to the battery to cool them and it shuts for better aerodynamics when the battery doesn't need cooling. The lights are really beautiful on this car. These are the optional matrix LED lights. Okay, you get the dynamic swipe indicators, the double J blade for the DRL. And of course, these matrix lights can dim particular LEDs to ensure that oncoming traffic is not blinded. That's amazing as well. You get a headlight washer. which is again fantastic, a bit slow though. And front fog lights, which are placed down here, these are actually again optional. You get front parking sensors, you get a towing hook, a green number plate because this is electric. And yeah, the overall design looks really fantastic. But come to the side and you realize that it's not very long as such. This car is slightly under 4.7 meters in length, yet it has a wheelbase of almost three meters because of course, cab forward design and the wheels are really ahead there. All right. Now, the good thing is that these wheels have good amount of side profile, which means 235, 60, 19 is the size of the tire. 350 mm disc up front. Jaguar logo looks really very nice. Alloy wheel design is actually good. It could have been slightly more adventurous and better in, in terms of that. Okay, you can see the air suspension right there. When you open the mirrors, or rather unlock the car, there's actually a light which comes from here. And these mirrors obviously get the heating function memory function as well but the steering does not get the memory function i'll tell you why later but it actually remembers your mirror position with the seat as well now there is a camera right there and this is not finished in body color it's silver finishing which looks nice jaguar written here kind of gets dirty inside 
variant name is written here not at the rear hsc is actually written here and you see the underbody well that is very neatly concealed for sure because it's electric all right and what is the most electrifying feature i believe is of course the door handles which pop in and out again for aerodynamic efficiency and obviously for drama as well now this is very 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 similar to the range rover Vlar. okay and you get this sort of a chrome line around the windows as well this is a black colored roof actually it's a glass car has become very dirty i don't know what the car wash guy does but he was supposedly to clean the car and it was clean because the wipers were up this is where the fluid actually comes from the wiper itself and uh, what i really like is the fact that this car looks very unconventional just look at the design okay you come to the side and you realize it's a very unconventional looking car which i actually like now in order to open the boot of the car you can just come behind and wave your foot Or you can press a button like I did right now and it opens the tailgate. It obviously gets electric tailgate. Boot is actually big enough but the spare tire has been placed right on top which actually just eats into the boot carrying capacity. The spare wheel is actually not an alloy. It cannot be an alloy because it will not fit a full size tire. In fact, the size of the tire 175 80 19s. So space saver to obviously save space here. You got a you got a 60 40 split seat as well and i think there's an option of having maybe probably this has a 40 20 40 option as well meanwhile the boot is obviously completely useless with the spare wheel on top there is a hook right here there's a 12 volt charging socket right there there's another hook there and below here also there is some motor storage space but i cannot access it with this heavy spare wheel on top and there is this band so that you can secure your stuff just going to press this button and there the boot closes you can see this there's a spray which actually comes out from here to clean the reverse parking camera it says ev400 all-wheel drive jaguar i pace again dynamic swipe indicators for the rear as well and the lights look beautiful at night in fact you see the jaguar logo is right inside too so a lot of attention detail in that sense the lights are all leds they have to be in order to conserve you know power okay it says jaguar led technology again the jag logo on the inside now, i think we spent a lot of time on the outside you know why because this is an all new design looks really very rad i love how jaguar has actually designed this car it looks very different in fact sort of a diffuser treatment here and everything is flat obviously no exhaust because it is electric but what is this fake stuff happening here Facil Hans fingers of truth got hurt recently but still they'll try to figure what is happening there is this subtle spoilerish i don't know this lip spoiler for no reason at all okay let's get into the rear straight away here i open the door okay there are request sensors on all the doors of this car the doors actually open wide enough and there's this option of having a sensor here a light here which actually tells you that if there's someone coming behind not to open the door that's also a very nice feature you get this nice sort of a chrome finish door pockets are decent size could have been bigger okay there is no i pace written right there floor is almost flat but because of the battery it is a little on the higher side as such all right this is a nice treatment okay nice stitching as well but it gets the optional all leather extension or something of that sort seats are very comfortable a bit upright if i may okay here you can recline the seat because in order to increase the boot carrying capacity but hey mr spare wheel won't let you do that and again this doesn't fold almost flat so if you put something it's going to roll back so that could have been done slightly better okay the seats are really very heavy and now the seat belt is stuck here now obviously it gets isofix child seat mounts there it says top tether okay the problem is it has this cover for the same which you're definitely going to lose so i'm just going to try and place it in position now here actually oh my god this is significant effort yeah it is actually a 40 20 40 split seat which means that want to carry long items not an issue at all put it back into place now because of this sort of a hump thing headroom is a problem for the center passenger obviously if he doesn't have a head that's not an issue there is a center headrest all the headrests are adjustable of course there's a center armrest with twin cup holders as well but the real issue is okay what is this there's something of sorts here i can't understand parcel shelf is big enough you can stuff things there because you don't need to see from the rear view mirror i'll tell you that also in a bed okay slightly scooped out seat back magazine holder ac vents here ac vents are only there actually these are the ac air conditioning controls you get two usb c charging sockets along with a 12 volt charging socket and you know what there's actually storage space here as well yeah there is storage space here below the seats that's also pretty handy you can hide stuff or maybe keep your 
tablet or something of that sort i like that okay let me get inside and tell you that there's good amount of leg room and good amount of knee room but under thigh support is shockingly poor and head room is just about adequate in order to ensure good head room what they have done there is no sun blind for the sun roof yeah there is no sun blind for the sun roof so that head room is not an issue but the problem is it heats up okay now jago says it has this uv sort of a technology uv cutting technology like your sunglasses but oh my god this is so freaking hot there's a hook there's a handle same is the case on that side as well now light placement on the top i don't know yeah there is the light which is functional but this actually eats into the headroom for the center passenger like i told you overall seat comfort is nice seat is a bit too upright could have been slightly more reclined in that sense meanwhile this is adjustable in two ways the headrest but the seat itself is adjustable in 16 ways the front seat of course no height adjust for the front seat belt there is a hook right there says airbag Okay, these are the air conditioning controls. Gets a four-zone climate control air conditioning system as an option. Standard is two-zone. So again, a lot of optional bits inside this car. Let's do one thing. Let's get out from here. Now, let me close the door once. Okay, let's do the proper third window area. Could have been slightly bigger. Dashboard design is actually very, very, very appealing. I like it. I like the way the dashboard has been done on this car. Okay, it says airbag right there, and it says Jaguar along with the location a commentary where Jaguar is from. Established 1935. This is unnecessary, but still, it's there. I mean, just to remind people that Jaguar is an old luxury car brand, and still making some awesome cars. Okay, doors don't take much effort to close. Meanwhile, let's get to the front. Now, this car has plenty of features as expected. Although I expected this to have definitely been there, which is electric adjust for the steering wheel. Now, this doesn't get electric adjust; it gets a manual adjust for both reach as well as rake. And the lever is so hard to operate now. that i took the liberty of already keeping it open and oh my goodness that hurts there is a proper dead pedal brake pedal accelerator pedal this seems to be for the headlight leveler although it has got self leveling headlights this is to open the boot of the car this is to open the trunk and this is the electric parking brake now you've got a lot of controls this is for the child lock for both the doors as well as the windows for the rear rear of course children sit at the rear these are the controls for the power windows what one touch up and down these are the controls for the adjustment of the outside rear view mirrors this is to lock and lock the vehicle and this is for the memory function for the seat 16 way adjust so you never have an issue even in terms of under thigh support that's never going to be a problem for you in fact there's so much storage now there's a storage space here as well check that out okay is that a light or something this storage space here as well in fact in certain models i've actually seen a charging port here yeah that circle could be a charging port but there's storage space almost everywhere because this car obviously does not get a transmission so there's no transmission tunnel which is occupying space there's no gear lever which is occupying space seats are very comfortable indeed like really nice now these are the sport seats you also get the option of performance seats performance seats are like obviously the racing seats you get the jag logo on the top now the dashboard design is really very nice first things first i'm going to close the door and i'm going to turn on the car and here the car does not really roll to life because it's in electric it doesn't have to roll to life it just turns on very subtly with this sort of a graphic in fact this graphic is very cool when it turns the car off as well that thing goes out and then there's the jaguar logo and then that also diminishes small silently as such this one of the air conditioning let me just keep the key here there's also an activity key which lets you wear it and then go for swimming so that's also cool there's something when the tata nexon gets by the way this cannot be moved ahead or behind but this storage space is massive this is 10 and a half liters but twin cup holders you can actually remove this so yeah you can just remove this that's massive in terms of size obviously and there is this sort of a hook as well so you can you know secure your stuff a 12 volt charging socket a regular usb a usb c as well and then i just going to slot i'm just going to slot this into place here we are there it goes so that's also pretty awesome there's a place for your key as well and this is a wireless charging pad which by the way is optional it gets a booster yeah so that the range of your phone actually increases and improves now this glove box is actually lockable but it's very small in terms of size i don't know what you're going to keep you're going to keep diamond that's why it's small and it's lockable as well so yeah piano black finishing and nice leather treatment very asymmetrical dashboard in even in terms of the colors now the car actually turns off automatically when you get out of the vehicle even if you want to keep it on because jaguar thinks that owners can forget the car is running because it's so silent now the dashboard is massive you see the dashboard is so humongous because of the cab forward design and obviously electric motors are <laughs> uh, below like the front one 
player too, obviously in this car. There's a sunglass holder. Okay, it's bringing in a lot of heat. This does an open massive panoramic roof. Good for bringing in the airy feeling inside the cabin. There's a mirror along with the light. Same is the case here as well. There's a mirror along with the light. There's a handle to hold on to both sides. I mean, everywhere there's a handle to hold on to. Now you can just click it like this to turn on the lights of the car, which is really very nice. And uh, obviously it gets connected car tech. You can also preheat the car. There's an app in which you can decide how much time you want the car to be charged. So you can turn it off, turn it on. I mean, obviously the usual connected car bits, which makes it very convenient to use this vehicle. Now, there are a lot of buttons here. This is obviously the selector for the mode. This is for drive, this is for neutral, this is for reverse, and this is for parking. Meanwhile, this is actually for all surface progress control, which is like the cruise control for slow speed driving or off-road driving, which works till 30 kilometers per hour. This is for the mode selector, and I'll talk about it when we're driving the car. This is for traction control system. This is to increase or decrease the ride height of the vehicle. This is like for the air suspension, which again is optional. Now, this is a 5.5 inch screen for the climate control system. Now. It is not very intuitive to use, unfortunately. Here, I'm going to turn on the car. Oh, it's already on. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Okay, I press this button. Climate control actually turns on. Now, this is to increase or decrease the temperature. Meanwhile, what I can do, if I press it inside center, then it changes for ventilation and heating function of the seats. Okay, now, what if I want to increase the fan speed? I actually pull it out. Once I pull it out, it's obviously going to get, yeah, there it is. So, I can increase or decrease the fan speed. So that's how it works, multiple functions on the same, which is nice, but it's very cumbersome to use. And again, because Piano Black, it's a fingerprint magnet. Now there is some nice bit here, firstly, obviously it gets the PM 2.5 air filter to purify the cabin. I can press this button to get into it. Okay, it's turned on at the moment. Now this is this uh, smart climate, which is able to realize on which seat is the person sitting and accordingly concentrate the airflow there so that it conserves battery and doesn't end up cooling places of the car where there's nobody actually sitting. So yeah, this is actually very cumbersome. I would have appreciated if they would have just given buttons, although there are some buttons and switches here. Okay, it's not that intuitive to use. You can obviously decide how you want to use and where you want the airflow. And you can straight away decide also where you want the concentration of the seat heating to happen. So let's do one thing. Let's just, okay, there I turned it on. I'm just going to turn off everything because it's going to make noise, of course. I, I'm just struggling to understand how do I go back in the menu? That is how cumbersome it is. Just let's turn this off. Okay, I'm getting into low. Oh my God, I need to pull this out. Yeah, you understand my pain. They should have not done it. So complex. Let's turn it off. There it turns off. Now it's known as the Touch Pro Duo because of two screens. Now this is a 10 inch unit. This is known as the PV Pro. Now it's slick enough, but it's very, 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 very confusing. Navigation is nice because it works fantastically well. And it also shows it in the heads up display. Can you show the, uh, can you see the heads up display? Now it's not a very advanced heads up display. It's very average. You get to know which song is playing there. You get to know navigation data as well as the speed of the car. Now, the thing here is that this screen is very cumbersome as such. First and foremost, there's this amazing camera, which I want to show you. Okay, 360 degree camera, which is very similar to one which you have seen in the Defender as well. And uh, it's similar to one which we've seen in BMW cars. Only thing is BMW has done it better. It's better. The resolution is better. It's not that great, the resolution here. But still, it's nice. Although they could have matched the color of the car, you can just press wherever you want to see the car from the outside perspective. And if you want to see, that's like the bird's eye view. If you want to see it from closer, from your own point of view, you can press these buttons to access that as well. Now, let's get outside of this camera and let me get into the home. Uh, okay, these tiles. Now, there are a lot of functions here. I can get into cameras from here too. Okay, this is the 360 degree camera, which works very nice. Of course, there's a valet mode, there's an EV mode. The EV mode basically tells you how the energy is being consumed and how much charge is there in the car. 59%, 449 kilometers, the predicted range. I don't know, down a cliff probably, because it's not going to go that much. It's preferred charging period. It tells you exactly what time you should be charging the car and all that stuff, which is kind of unnecessary, but a little gimmicky. But since there's nothing much to play about, this is what is happening. There's vehicle preconditioning, which actually cools the cabin before you enter. There's eco data. Uh, which basically gives you feedback of how you're driving the what is going to be the impact on your driving like on in terms of the range there's eco tips as well driving score okay i'm still in school right now it gives you the history also okay there i got an award for doing i don't know what maybe i was not driving the car all right so all this gimmicky stuff is there which is cool to play around with now you can actually decide how you want the dynamic mode to work so you can decide for the motor the steering as well as the suspension there's a freaking stopwatch as well my phone has a stopwatch why do i need one in the infotainment system of my car i don't know there's a lap timer too and there's a g meter yeah there is a freaking g meter as well so a lot of gimmicky stuff inside this jack okay now all surface information gives you the driving information how the power distribution is happening and what mode you are in and it also explains what are the various modes of the car that is like 
unnecessarily probably i'm here to drive the car not to learn about it while driving okay so adsi monitor surface blah 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 okay unnecessary not needed not needed not needed at all so low traction launch is basically it helps you to launch in low traction surfaces by ensuring the all-wheel drive system is up to task so all of this is okay cool enough you get all the regular bits as well voice commands which don't really work well now the audio system is actually pretty nice let me play an audio right away I'm saying audio system is very nice and the singer is laugh laughing like ha 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 ha. That was not funny at all. All right. The good thing is there's a physical control here to turn on and off the volume. There's a hazard light switch. This is the start stop button. Now, when I was talking, okay, air conditioning turned on. Why? I don't know. Okay. Audio system is actually nice because it is a Meridian sound system. This is 825 watts, 16 speakers, one subwoofer. And it's a Meridian 3D surround sound system, which is fantastic. They managed to use smaller speakers somehow to get awesome audio quality. But you know, the problem is the last car I drove was a Lexus LS500H, which has next level of audio quality. So it kind of feels a little less in, in that regard. It's not the best system out there, but still it's good enough. Now here I can get into settings. Now there's another crazy menu. I get into all. Okay, and this is so confusing. Why can't they have everything in one go? Now, yeah, last time I was actually struggling to find where is the regeneration. I was like, it should be in vehicle. I'm searching everywhere, vehicle, vehicle, vehicle. Could not find it. I'll tell you where it was. But active sound design lets me decide amongst three sounds, calm, normal, and dynamic. Why do I need that? So that I feel that although I am driving an electric car, saving the environment, yet I'm having the feel of driving a V8 engine car. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, <laughs> so that's also there. And usual bits, convenience features, driver assistance. I don't think it has all the driver assistance system, although it has got adaptive cruise control, which is able to recognize, okay, the cruise control switch is here. So if there's a car ahead, it's able to apply brakes in order to ensure that it doesn't crash into it and then increase or decrease the speed accordingly. These are the controls for the audio system and also for this screen, which is a 12.3 inch all digital unit. The problem is this button is very fidgety and there's only one button. They could have put more buttons and this button actually you can decide what you want it for. So it can be either for navigation. I mean, you can choose. It's like a favorite button. I've actually put it for navigation. Long press will turn off navigation and a short press will turn off the audio system or turn it on as well now actually what i was searching for came out to be i think in not even in general where was it i think it was in apps yeah it's in apps why is it in apps in ev here i can decide if i want the creep function to happen like an automatic car i want to turn it off regenerative braking can be between low and high and there's a low power mode something identical to what's there on my phone which will basically turn off the air conditioning system and help in increasing the battery range so that you can reach a charging station that's also pretty cool now let me get into reverse right away it gets a spray here so there you can see water is being sprayed to clean the camera this is there in almost all the jaguar land rover cars i believe okay now let's get into neutral now when you actually you saw the mirror actually changing position so whenever you get into reverse the mirror actually changes position there's this quarter glass at the front as well although at the rear there is a lot of blind spots there are a lot of blind spots actually you see that pillar is super duper thick how do you see behind not a problem you have the got the clear sight camera there is the clear sight camera again this is part of optional kit so a lot of options on this car in fact adaptive dynamics is also optional so yeah jaguar has gone crazy with the amount of options the steering wheel is actually quite big as such okay the wipers work really well you see the spray is coming out from the wipers itself and cleans the windscreen in no time at all automatic wipers automatic headlights obviously something you expect these are the controls for the headlights as well as for the indicators of the car in front and rear fog lights are also there now in order to browse through this here i press this button now i can get into the display settings now there are multiple modes okay this is for the heads up display i can change stuff there also position whatever whatever i don't really care about it right now but i'm trying to browse through it and it's a little cumbersome to be really honest with you guys somehow i'm not able to get the right thing working ever okay i'm just pressing this button assuming this to work yeah now it's working so the screen is a little old honestly and so is the infotainment system although it's kind of new but it's still not that fluid enough now it's got a tire pressure monitoring system i want to get into obviously i want to get into the infotainment system so i can decide what i want on the left panel and also on the right panel what am i doing and what is happening this is so freaking confusing i press this button to enter it and it started the audio system so yeah jaguar needs to really revise their infotainment system as well as the instrument cluster i mean the cluster is nice but the weight functions is not nice at all it's super confusing uh, okay here we browse through there and i'm going to get into layout now there are multiple layouts one dial two dial full map i love the full map one it looks super duper cool and i just want to exit this right now yeah that's the full map view so that you don't get distracted while driving the car your focus would be completely 
on the navigation part of things okay and the navigation is tuned in order to have all the charging port listed there so that whenever you're getting low on charge you can easily go and charge the vehicle as well now let me get out of this oh god this is so freaking cumbersome come on yeah there we are now i'm going to get into layout and i'm just going to put it into the one dial one which i honestly like a lot no i want the two dial actually the two dial one is the one i like a lot because here i can decide what i want in the center otherwise i can just have the eye pace sitting right there this is for the speedometer okay lady don't talk to me I, I i don't want to talk to you please don't talk to me i'm sorry i don't want to talk to you i don't know why she keeps talking okay <laughs> now here you see all surface progress control is turned on speedometer digital speedometer it's telling you the gear position indicator odometer how much battery is there and automatic headlights this is actually for the charge and power which shows how much charge and power is being uh, happening at all times temperature and whatnot it's nice but the honest problem here is that it's not intuitive to use like how it's in a bmw or a mercedes and mercedes instrument cluster infotainment system is next level i'm not even talking about the s class yet but the s class is i don't even talk about it honestly it is something else entirely now since i've got the liberty of turning on the car i'm going to turn on the lights it's telling me turn lighting stock to auto to use adaptive driving beam thank you so much for the tuitions i really appreciate it okay we're going to turn on all the lights and then i'm going to show you hopefully it doesn't turn off the car don't turn off the car please don't turn off the car it's showing me exactly which door is open as well and i'm going to quickly show you the lights okay Lights are really very nice and bright. I love the lights on this car. Very nicely done. Good job, Jag. Now the charging port is actually on this side. So there is the charging port, and uh, yeah, they could have actually put it on both the sides because the place where I charge, there I think it's on the right. So I have to park the car ulta as such. Now, as I see it, this Jaguar I-Pace is full of features, very loaded, lot of technology. But the honest problem here is those three screens are really very cumbersome. Not the easiest to use, not the most intuitive, but there's good amount of space on offer, a lot of tech, really nice design, and I like it for sure. But honestly, how is it to drive? Well, let's get going straight away. All right, we're all set to go, which means turning off the air conditioning of the car. Now we're going to get into some settings to make some changes straight away. I, this is so confusing. Okay, here we go into regenerative braking. I'm actually going to put it into high. and then i'm going to go back because i want to get into the vehicle and i want to turn on the fake sounds which come from the car active sound design it is in dynamic as well that's great all right and then we want to see some data also while driving the car so we're going to get into dynamic i hopefully it shows us okay g force meter is there that's again amazing tell me me how much brake and throttle i'm using all this is closed okay we get into dynamic mode straight away i'm going to turn off traction control as well traction control off clear side mirror on hazard lights off left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator revving the motor we are in drive yeah revving the motor and off we go acceleration is super brisk and braking is even briskier because of the regenerative braking look at the car decelerate i kid you not the deceleration is so fast it's so fast that i have left my foot from the brakes i didn't apply brakes even once after accelerating and the car is already coming to a halt there it is it's just stopped what is happening basically regenerative braking it converts kinetic energy into electrical energy in order to charge the battery and here it is going to crawl at 10 then 9 then 8 km per hour it's not going to come to a stop as such but this is how it works brilliantly well right regenerative braking there are two settings for the same low and high somehow it, you can't turn it off completely usually cars have it on the paddles so there are no paddles in this car for the regenerative braking which is a little disappointing though anyways here we come to a halt let me tell you a couple of more things it says jaguar here that's like crazy attention to detail this car has got six airbags as well so left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator has a light off It goes from zero to one hundred kilometers per hour in no time at all. In fact, it takes four point eight seconds to go from zero to one hundred kilometers per hour, which is blisteringly quick. Okay, two quick things I need to tell you. First and foremost, this car gets very limited ambient light colors, which is again disappointing considering the Mercedes Benz cars get sixty four freaking colors. Here we have the option of I think only one, which is blue, and then obviously the cluster changes its color to sort of a red finish in dynamic mode, which is actually quite cool. And while this car is not equipped with roof rails, the cars which are equipped with roof rails can actually handle seventy five kgs of weight. That's also impressive. now what is powering this car it's a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack lithium ion of course and it's placed between the wheel base meanwhile it has two electric motors the electric motors are actually placed on the axle yeah one at the front axle one at the rear axle the result is that it ends up producing 200 horsepower and 340 newton meters of torque and when you add them up it's like 400 horsepower and 696 newton meters of torque which comes from zero freaking rpm the result is it's so freaking punchy acceleration is super punchy super precise super awesome and the motor is very refined it's so refined so refined 
because there is no engine it's an electric motor there's no sound at all that's why it actually makes some sort of fake sounds or acoustics in jaguar land rover speak on the outside below 20 km per hour to tell the pedestrian that you are actually inside the car and driving it well i, I guess yeah that, that's a good feature to have honestly when i was outside the car when nuren was driving i could not hear a thing she almost knocked me over because i didn't see i just like jumped into the park no i didn't do any of that <laughs> okay the acceleration is super duper awesome it's absolutely kick as it's relentless right from get go great drivability great low end great mid range stupendous power delivery throughout because there is no gearbox to create a lag there's no turbo to create a lag there's no engine only to create a lag it's just pure electric thrust my claps did not come so we're going to change the cluster mode quickly because that's the one i like more and there's some confusion happening here but i'll still manage to figure this out here we are in display and i'm going to get into layout and here we are into the two dial one i absolutely love this okay let me just close this at the moment yeah there you can see the jaguar i pace left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator says power and off we go i didn't talk to you oh god this lady now she wants to always intervene okay you can see the sort of response here now the good thing is that Although the small amount of sound you are hearing that can be turned off as well because there are three modes for the sound as well. Okay, one is calm, one is normal, which is actually the, the real one, and uh, then there is this dynamic one, which is unnecessary. From which angle does this car sound like a V8? Please tell me. Now you heard a V8. That is how a V8 sounds. So you have to go and experience all the V8s before electric takes over. And unfortunately, that's going to happen because Jaguar itself is planning to go all electric by 2025. Now I'm applying brakes. It says charge. It doesn't have a tachometer. It has a power and charge meter, which tells me how the charging is happening. All right. Now they have actually placed the electric motors on the axle just to ensure low center of gravity. And they have actually got 50/50 weight distribution as well. And that's the reason why the handling of this car is absolutely surreal. Oh my God, a car weighing 2.2 tons has no business being so good in terms of handling. body roll super well contained tires offer stupendous grip in fact there's four drive modes on offer there is an eco mode in which also this car feels super duper punchy super duper awesome super duper fast and has a top speed of 200 km per hour which it reaches stupendously quickly yeah you get a road and it's going to reach 200 in no time at all because the electric motor never gives up it keeps going on and 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 this battery is obviously having a warranty of 8 years or 160000 km whichever happens to be earlier Yeah, I, I just want this paddle shifter so I can keep changing the regenerative braking, but that is not the case. And things are a little complex getting into this menu and trying to take changes. Now, when you're the horn is actually quite nice, huh? But when you're driving in the city, you realize that you have to be really very cautious with your right foot, even in eco mode, because you flex it a bit and the car absolutely takes off. There's so much grunt; it's absolutely insane the amount of thrust on offer. Okay, there is relentless power delivery. 4.8 seconds to 100 is super duper fast, without a doubt. and it also handles brilliantly well thanks to the fact that they managed to get the aerodynamic spot on you don't hear anything inside nothing absolutely nothing other than that fake sound which comes which also is not exciting enough to be very honest with you but you hear a bit of the road noise and why does the road noise come because the cabin is so silent now so a little bit of tire noise and road noise can be heard but wind noise cannot be heard because of the aerodynamics wind just flows smoothly this car is super slippery as well grip levels are fent tabulous okay i was telling about the drive mode i kind of digress ye auto pe niche hote rehte hai kya hmm aaj aapki kismat mein sirf traffic you don't need to honk to get attention yeah so i kind of digressed now there's eco mode there is a normal mode which you can say uh, okay it's actually the comfort mode there's a dynamic mode and there's something known as adr or something of that sort which is adaptive surface response asr no adr no whatever okay because when you get here it says something else i'll just get in right now and show it to you as well so here it is and we are in that mode it says adsr which is adaptive surface response what it does is basically it's able to judge the surface and accordingly make changes to the electric motor as well as the braking performance of the car to ensure optimum traction on bad road surfaces yeah and it's got adaptive dynamics which uses the adaptive dampers and also calculates a lot of parameters of the vehicle like what is the steering input what is the acceleration brake where is the damper like like is it stiff is it soft and make changes to the dampers to ensure a fantastic ride quality i absolutely love how great the car's performance is absolutely stunning performance now i know the elephant in the room is what is the charging like okay first and foremost they claim a range of 470 km globally in the real world it will do somewhere around 350 to 370 km so which is also very respectable and there are four ways of actually charging charging this car first and foremost your home regular 15 ampere charger which is a ac wall charger can be used and that 
makes it go from zero to hundred percent in forty eight hours. That's like two days, okay. And then there's another AC charger which actually comes with the car, which is a seven point four kilowatt AC wall charger, which can be installed in your building or something of that sort. That takes it from zero to hundred percent in. 14 hours that's a lot of time you need a dc charger and there are options of two dc chargers as well there's a 25 kilowatt dc fast charger which takes it from 0 to 80% in 3 and a half hours which is the one which i used today to charge and juice up the car and i'll tell you what is the cost for the same to go from 0 to 100% battery it will cost you around 1800 rupees which makes the cost of running around rupees 5 and why is it so expensive because that's commercial rate which is being applied the government has not yet offered subsidies on charging infra yet once that happens it should reduce to around 2 rupees probably even lesser and there's the 50 kilowatt fast charger which goes from 0 to 180% sorry not 100% zero to, i'll tell you why also it's from 0 to 80% in just 1 and 1/2 hours or 90 minutes okay actually the thing is after 80% the charging becomes slightly slower so that is one issue now in terms of comparing it with diesel or comparing it with petrol diesel cost of running is around 10 to 11 rupees per kilometer and for petrol it is almost 14 to 15 rupees per kilometer so obviously electric is much cheaper but all those people who think by buying electric you're going to save the environment i'm sorry that's not going to happen because right now you know the mining of all the components and all is not very sustainable till that doesn't happen just don't go singing the electric bandwagon please and then i got to know the thought line i forget everything absolutely stunning acceleration brakes are also very very nice in fact uh, it has a system wherein it applies more pressure from the abs system to ensure even faster stopping power in case of emergency situations but there is a caveat uh, when you do that uh, obviously the hazard lights also turn on this good amount of grip on offer this absolutely stunning levels of grip on offer even when i turn off traction control system it will still not skid or slide or wheel spin at all that's a level of all wheel drive performance and it doesn't have to have a complex mechanical link between the front axle and the rear axle because it has its separate motors on each axle to ensure all wheel drive capabilities and then obviously the air suspension makes the ride quality absolutely stunning and brilliant the ride on this car is absolutely fantabulous okay firstly they've got the right size of the tires that definitely helps the cause and then is the fact that oh my god the suspension is just so well calibrated mind blowing to be honest like any road surface it takes it in its stride without any hesitation that's the level of compliance from the suspension and the air suspension has its own benefits like once you hit 105 km per hour it drops the ride height by 10 mm for better aerodynamic efficiency a car which is lower to the ground is better obviously so because we are driving an adaptive service response or even when you drive in eco mode it does not let you turn off traction control so we're just going to shift from that mode right away and i'm going to get into the one which i love the most dynamic for the win there the fake sounds come no 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 you're no v8 baby don't try to pretend like one and then talking about v8 well this car is also costly when you compare it to other cars in the market however registration charge is zero This car costs rupees 1.19 crores on road Mumbai. Meanwhile, base variant which is the S costs rupees 1.12 crore. The mid range which is the SE costs 1.15 crores and lot of stuff is optional as well. So you can see this car's price going almost till 1.3 crores. And the insurance charge happens to be 5.6 lakhs for the first year itself. It actually slots right between the Germans, between the EQC which is slightly cheaper and the e-tron which is slightly more expensive. I think the e-tron costs rupees 5 lakhs more. So yes, Jaguar has actually positioned the I-Pace brilliantly well. It's a fantastic car, really fun to drive, but I wouldn't buy it just yet because just really cumbersome to keep charging a car with no proper infrastructure in the country yet. Now that's a little unfortunate though. Oh, there is a stop watch, there's a lap timer and you can do a lot of these things which is just unnecessary for this car. Okay, we're going to turn off traction control. We're going to see if we can actually do some wheel spin, which I really doubt. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, revving the motor. Let's see. no wheel spin at all zero nil nada zilch it just doesn't wheel spin because of the fantastic grip and it has got torque vectoring by braking what it does is when you're coming to a corner the inside wheel brakes are applied on it in order to ensure that there is no understeer as such and the car doesn't even oversteer all wheel drive cars don't really oversteer unless and until it's a BMW X5 M Can you hear that sound? That's so freaking unnecessary. Okay, what you're going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of more things, which means I have to get into the settings. This could have been slightly easier for sure. Okay, we are going to get into apps and we are going to get into EV, and I'm going to put regenerative braking on low, so I can show you that as well. And then I'm also going to get into vehicle, and I am going to get into active sound design, and I'm going to make it calm. Okay, now let's see if you can hear much of it. Yeah, actually, it doesn't make much sound as such. And onto the throttle. supreme acceleration what fantastic acceleration absolutely lovely i love the 
throttle response from this car can you hear much of it now i've left the throttle now it's not decelerating much so i think it's more like a regular ice car in terms of deceleration it also gets a creep mode what it does is it creeps ahead like an automatic car but unfortunately now even though it has something known as auto hold or something of that sort where it doesn't go back okay to ensure that on decline doesn't roll back i have faced an issue where the car is actually rolled back a bit uh, as well i think in the tata motors dealership where i was charging the car it rolled back it touched the nexon the nexon being a five star rated car nothing happened at all i'm just kidding about that love the way this car is to drive it's so much fun it's so agile it is super to oh my god you hear the tire sound i did okay the steering is such a joy you know what it's kind of light at low speed but it weighs up beautifully well at almost every given speed and the overall heft of the steering is fantastic this is a real jaguar in the real sense and it uses an all new electric vehicle platform to ensure that it is very well packaged and packaging is just brilliant on this car so i will say probably wait till the prices become more realistic for electric cars because obviously it is a new concept and that's the reason prices are also high and that's the reason even charging infrastructure is not up to the mark the good thing is unlike the eqc there is no issue of ground clearance you can even at low mode the access high mode you can still glide through on the worst of speed breakers without having to worry about anything at all so guys <laughs> <laughs> this is my vlog of the Jaguar I-Pace. It also has got adaptive cruise control, which I've already explained. It's got a lot of tech as such, but some amount of it is missing, which we see in Mercedes cars. Again, Mercedes Benz has kind of become the benchmark in terms of luxury cars, in terms of the features they offer. If you like this vlog, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That's a like button, and also subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next video real soon. Bye bye. Get my minute.